All right, this is the 2024 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy. This car is very exciting. It's something we've been wanting to put up on this channel for a while now, but we wanted to get some of the more newer and more unique products into a video and on the channel, but we're finally doing it. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into the horsepower and torque. This is a six cylinder, eight speed automatic. It's 292 horsepower and 267 pound feet of torque. This is in the hyper white color with the black interior. Again, like I said before, there is a lot to say about this car. So let's just go through the whole thing and we're gonna try to make it quick because like I said, there's a lot going on. So this portion's recorded after I already did the video. Half the time I forget to do this, so I'm gonna do this real quick. This car gets 21 miles per gallon combined. It gets 24 in the highway and 19 in the city. The total price is $54,670. Our price will always be less than MSRP. So I'm gonna have our price right here. So you can see that if you're interested. And if you like that price and are interested in purchasing this or any other Palisade or really any other Hyundai vehicle, make sure you check the link out in the description or visit our website by typing mcgehyundai.com. That's McGee Hyundai com and you can get every hyundai vehicle for at or under msrp all right thank you and let's get back to the video so at the front here we have these really nice and skinny lights all throughout it's quite sleek especially the further back you go the front here has this plastic but painted metal uh grill with the air dam at the bottom. We have some strong body line around, along the bottom here. And really nice wheel arches throughout here. We have some nice rims here, very sturdy. And let's actually take a look at the tire size. They are two 45 50R20s. Some mirrors here, which do have cameras on the bottom of that, though we'll get to those in a bit later. Coming around the back here, let me give you a back view, a backside view here, and come around for a full back view. Nice, bulky lights right here some reflectors along the bottom as well. All right, let's pop her open. Beautiful lift there. Up top, we have a button to close as well as a grab handle. We have some carpeting here. Let's put this on a dry spot over here. So we get some carpeting, a cargo net, and a first aid kit. We'll just toss these on the third row. Pardon the dirtiness. Uh, it's not too bad, just a little bit of salt here. But just look at that back space area. This is a carpet that does come with it for the rear. Underneath here, we have some storage space. We have a jack, some wheel locks, um, and I believe Let's take a look here. Wheel removal tools and uh, the lever for the jack, for the quick jack. All right, we're just gonna leave. It's hard to do it with one hand. Closing that. Over here, we have buttons for the second and the third row. We can push down the third row like that, which we will do. If the headrests were up, it would pop them down for you and it looks like the carpet's a little misaligned, uh, but normally this would sit flush with it. 
and then we can also pop them straight back up, which we're not going to do at this point. Uh, and we can also knock the second row down, though there is a box there, so it's going to block them a little bit. We have a 12 volt, 180 watt power supply and some cargo hooks right here. Um, I believe that is the um, cargo cover that would connect throughout here as well. So we get quite a lot of cargo space. The numbers sh should be up in this vicinity. And it's quite a beautiful interior. So let's actually pop these back up. If I can hit the button. So we can hop in that third row and talk about comfort over there. I just want to watch these come up. Again, carpet is misaligned. That's why it's not coming up correctly, but don't mind that. Let's throw these back in here. And if you end up buying a car from us, our cleaning team will make sure this is all spick and span for you. Push this button up here. It should come down nice and tight. While we're back here, I do want to mention we have a backup camera here and we have another camera right here, which again, we'll talk about in a little bit. All right, let's come around to this third row. We're going to mess with the second row real quick. So starting off in the second row, before we get back there, there's two ways. Actually, there's really four ways to move this seat. The first way is the way you're probably used to which is a lever that we can pull, which drops that down flat. And then there is a bar under here to push it forward like so. Push that all the way back. And then there's a button right here, which does that. And finally, a button right here. So like I said, there's four ways to maneuver this seat. And if I didn't say so before, excuse me for any background noise you might hear. We're right next to a road, unfortunately, so it's just what we have to deal with. Let's move this forward one more time and let's hop in the back here. Now, I am a very tall person, so this is not going to be comfortable, but we actually slide right in here. If you watched my 2024, pardon me, if you watched my 2024 Santa Fe review, you know that in the Santa Fe, getting into the back seat was very uncomfortable uh, for me. And that's partially because in that video, we were in the SEL, which had bench seats. This one has captain chairs, which is nice because it makes it easier to maneuver back here. Let's pull this all the way back and sit up straight. I'm, I'm fairly comfortable, honestly. If there was another me sitting in this seat here, which is about how this would be positioned if I was sitting there, um, I would still be fairly comfortable. There's only a few minor gripes, I would say. One of those gripes is down here. Um, there seems to be some sort of carpet connection. I don't know if the video is getting that well. Carpet connection down here that when I put my foot on it, it elevates that foot slightly. Um, so that would be my only complaint. But beyond that, we have two cup holders here. We actually have buttons right here to move my back. Let's see if I can get it to move my back up and down which is nice. And we have a heated seat button. The car's not currently on, so it won't actually turn on, but heated seat and a USB-C port. And the other side also gets that. Beyond that, we also have some ventilation right here. And we can turn it off or on. Same with the other side. And, which I'll show you in a bit, we get a sun, uh, moon roof or sun roof or whatever you'd like to call it back here as well. One thing I want to mention is that the top here is this nice 
I believe, suede material. It's very comfortable, very luxury. It does look like there are stains up here, but once you swipe it, they disappear. So that would be the only minor downside. But as soon as someone knows that it's suede, they'll understand that it's not actually dirty. It's just the way the material works. All right, that should about cover everything here. So let's push this button and move it forward. That's another handy part of that button. And let's move into the second row with the captain's chairs. Sliding out is actually a lot easier than getting in. All right, let's hop up in here. Brilliant. All right, now that we're in here, let's take a look at our space and just see what we got going on. There's quite a lot going on here, actually. So let's start off from the left side and move on to the right. So starting on the left side, we have peasant blockers, which really just means sunshade, but Peasant blockers seems to be a common theme going on in car reviews. We have this nice chrome handle. We have some speakers integrated into the door. We have this nice faux wood trim. It's honestly my favorite part about the Palisade calligraphies. We have some nice sort of brushed metal type feel going on here with um, some window controls. We also have cup holder. We have two slots as well as a nice door cart here that could fit probably another bottle. On the back of both seats, we have a storage pocket. Again, we have that adjustability if we want to go forward or back and as well as on the back as well. And if you notice, let's see if I can get it at an angle where you can see it. You can see this kind of indent right here, which if I were to pull my seats forward for someone in the third row, create some extra space for my knees, which is nice. Moving along the side of the chair here, which is also over here, we have a USB-C port. Over here, we have ventilated seats heated seats and hvac controls for the fans and the direction and the temperature as well as an auto button down here we have a 12 volt 180 watt power supply and a 115 volt 150 watt um, plug in there and since they're captain chairs we also have a little arm down here we have a little pocket on both chairs. And again, they're kept in chairs, so we get this nice little walkable area. Or I should say more like shuffable area. We also have vents up here, which can be adjusted to your liking. We have some lights that still has the plastic on it, but we have some lights, which is nice. And again, that little moonroof section. So let's get out and we'll hop into the front. Nice solid door close. We have access to a few different things. The first thing we have is massage mode. Let me hit it again. You get pelvic, lumbar, and whole body. And this thing legitimately massages you. It's not like a, a mall massage chair. It's not going to destroy your back, but it's going to slowly move your lumbar and your back, and it's going to move um, underneath where you sit and a bit of your legs for that added comfort, especially if you're on a long drive. Let's turn it off. Coming back out, we have a nice little leg rest here. And then obviously we can move this all the way back and we can actually bring the seat fairly far down.
And now if we were to hop in this, just to purposely demonstrate it, you can actually completely lay back to the point where I'm looking at the roof. And then we can have it just bring us back up. You could see in the mirror me slowly rising into place. Perfect. Beyond that, we have some lumbar padding control here, which you can, I'm trying to get it on camera. It's hard to see here. It actually bolsters your sign more. And we have, of course, lumbar control, which again, you probably will barely see, if at all. The lumbar will go up and the lumbar goes down in front and back. We'll start off on the left side and then navigate, or sorry, yeah, on the left and then navigate to the right. Again, on the left, we have the faux wood, some chrome handles. I didn't mention before, but we have this nice faux leather. It's um, Hyundai's material. It's called h -Tex Leatherette, which I forgot to mention. All of the seats in this car are made out of that same material. It's very comfortable. It's very sturdy. And for the price point, it's it's I think it's pretty adequate. Over here, we have seat memory so you hit set and then you hit the seat and it'll go back i didn't set it so it actually moved my seat um, and you get a little notification on the dash there we have a child lock and window lock button here which is nice um, and then obviously power mirrors no fold button for the mirrors however which is a little disappointing but it's honestly it's not a huge deal Beyond that, I actually forgot to mention when we were on the outside, but if you notice there, there's auto dimming side mirrors and heated side mirrors, which is nice to have. Down over here along the side, we have illumination controls, a tow button, trash control, parking brake, and a trunk latch. Down the door card, we have space for a water bottle some snacks or paper or whatever you would store down there and a fuse box cover here all right let's power her on so we can start talking about the rest of this car before we do that let's talk about the steering wheel real quick this is one of few hyundais in the 2024 model year that does not come with a redesigned steering wheel the 24 Kona, 24 Sonata, and 24 Santa Fe do have a new looking steering wheel that removes this Hyundai badge um, and replaces it with the um, four dots and a couple other structural changes. But overall, it's not like a big deal. It doesn't change any functionality. It just changes the looks. So this is the standard steering wheel you would find on the 23 and the 22 Palisade. But beyond that, what do we have for controls? We have lane keep assist um, slash self-driving. It's it's Hyundai system that will turn for you. Um, it'll I should say it'll steer for you. It won't turn down streets or anything like that. But if you're following a windy road or any road for that matter, it'll go straight along the road. We have our um, adaptive cruise control, which is very excellent in Hyundais, may I add. We have a regular cruise button. We have a button for a voice assistant, which uses Hyundai's voice assistant. And if you're in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it does use Siri and Google. We have a favorites button for quick access to whatever our favorites is in the touchscreen. We also have paddle shifters, which is nice. All right, moving on from the steering wheel, let's move up to the digital gauge cluster. The digital gauge cluster in the 2024 Palisade Calligraphy is honestly brilliant. I am a big, big fan of this, and I'm not just saying that because I work at a Hyundai dealership. 
So let's start off with some basics and then we'll slowly move through everything that makes this so awesome. So the basic things are like this. You have access when you have um, adaptive cruise, it'll show another car in front of you as well as the spacing between the two cars. We can hit the menu button right here to access trip info. We can have maps up. We have, it shows the traction of your wheels um, and different things like that. And each one you can slide through to see your miles per hour ticker um, and accumulated trip information, sensory fueling, basically your fuel economy things. All right, so that's the general overview. The, we're gonna rapid fire some features to you. It has a speed limit detection so when you're going through a certain area that's a certain speed limit, it'll tell you what the speed limit is without needing to have the maps on. It tells you when lane centering is activated. In addition to that, when we change drive modes, we can go, let's start at the top here. We have smart mode, sport mode, comfort mode, eco mode, and snow mode. And as you can see, Every time you change the drive mode, the screen changes, which is very nice. The gauges change and appear differently based on the drive mode, which is brilliant. Beyond that, when you switch into sport mode, the seat, you won't see it, but actually bolsters your side more. So when you take a hard corner, you will stay in place easier. In comfort mode, it'll bring back those side bolsters and provides more back support. It doesn't move it going up or down, but rather the mechanical parts in the seat itself will push out more, push more padding towards you. Beyond that, when you are turning, and this is only on the calligraphy model, I do want to state that, when you're turning and you put your blinker on, you have a camera that shows what your mirror shows. Brilliant. And it seems like such a minor feature until you drive it every single day. And sometimes, especially here in Vermont, it can get a bit dirty. Your mirrors can get a bit dirty and you just can't see something. So you flick this on and then boom, you see your blind spot. And you would imagine that the camera would get dirty, but surprisingly, it really doesn't. And a little bit of rain X on that and you'll be fine. There's a few more things about the digital gauge, but we will not be covering that right now. Um, that is likely to come to our YouTube shorts. And if I do come around to it in this video, it'll be later in the video. So moving on from the digital gauge, we have, it's hard to capture on camera. We have a heads up display, which will show um, your radar cruise. If you have maps on, it'll tell you which direction to go in. It tells you the speed limit, things like that. You can adjust the uh, direction of it and the color of it. Let's move over here to the touchscreen. We're not gonna spend a lot of time with the touchscreen right now, um, but just to give you a quick overview, it's like every other Hyundai touchscreen. It's very fast, very responsive. There's no delay. I can go faster or slower and it's very quick. I can load things like maps instantaneously. It's really, sorry, it's really no problem. You can control climate, like rear climate. You can control front climate. You can control all of that from the touchscreen, but you can also control it from down here, which is a feature that is slowly becoming lost to our world. A lot of manufacturers nowadays are moving everything to the touchscreen when there's simply no reason to do that. And instead, Hyundai said, you know what? We're not going to do that you can have both. So you can control everything from the touchscreen, but if you don't wanna do that, you can come down here. You have a physical dial for temperature. You can turn on your front 
and rear defrosters, circulation, and of course an off button. But if you don't like that, you can also control it from the screen. And you can turn on how it faces you, the AC and the rear. And you have ventilated and heated seats as well as a heated steering wheel, which is very nice to have. We do have buttons for the transmission, so drive, neutral, reverse, and park. We have an auto hold button, and those drive modes I talked about before are in a dial, which I quite like personally. Um, some cars use a switch. This one decided on a knob. In the center, you have all-wheel drive lock. We have our parking assist, parking camera, which I'll go over in a little bit auto start stop um, and hill descent of course moving down even further we have usb type a and a wireless charging pad that is slightly elevated so your phone doesn't slide around too much we also have these cup holders which if you don't need them slide in and slide out this also closes in case you want to set something here or whatever it may be. Lifting up here, we have our center console, which has this nifty little tray if you want to use that. And a USB type C and a 12 volt, 180 watt power supply. Alrighty, actually, let's put this back into place. Alrighty. Again, looking at a bit of the interior accents, we have this faux wood trim that continues all the way around with the HTEX leatherette material um, and plastic on the lower parts. One thing I forgot to mention while on the door is we have a Harman Kardon speaker system here which I think is always nice to have. We also have physical buttons throughout here, um, map, navigation, radio, etc. Again, the favorites button for accessing whatever quick menu you added it to. Beyond that, it's hard to see during the day, but you can see ambient lighting throughout there, underneath here, and throughout here. I believe also down here, um, but again, it's hard to see during the day. It's really more beneficial at night. Coming up top, we have our sunroof and our moonroof, which is nice. Um, so we can slide that open like that. And if we want to open the rear, we can do so. And then we have this so we can open it up all the way which i'm not going to do um, it is a nice day out but there's no reason to have it on and you thought we were done but we're not we also have a digital mirror which has adjustable brightness and adjustable tilt Let's turn that back. And then when we put this into reverse, we have a backup camera. We have a top down view. We have another more focused top down view to make sure you're not running over anything. We have our camera view that pops up when we do the blinkers. And we have a, th a 3D 360 view, which allows you to view everything around you. And for accuracy, you can see that there's a couple cars right there, which there are. You can see a bit behind us and in front of us, which is always nice. We also have some settings for the warnings and the parking lines and things like that. All right. 
and the lines move both on this one and on this one. The lines also move on here as well. And this one doesn't for obvious reasons. Neither does this one, but if you look, it shows the wheels turning, which is nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the 2024 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy. I hope you all enjoyed that walk around. If there's anything that I missed, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, also let us know in the comments. If you're looking for a 2024 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy or any other Hyundai model, make sure to click that link in the description or type in mcgeehyundai.com. That's M-C-G-E-E -E, Hyundai.com to check them out. Our prices are always below MSRP and we will always deliver a car. So if you can't come into our dealership, maybe you live out of state, maybe you have trouble traveling, don't worry. Just give us a call. We'll help you find the vehicle you're looking for and we'll drop it off at your house, at your college, at your doctors, at your dentist. It does not matter. We will do it. Again, thank you all for watching the walk around and I hope you all have a wonderful and amazing day.